Unit 7. Using Cascading Style Shade. Part 1. It's a wonderful day. Nice to see you again. Today we will cover the key presentational technology that is used in website design which is the CSS or Cascading Style Shade. In this video, we will answer the questions, what is CSS? Why we use CSS? And how to apply CSS? I'm very much excited so let's get started. What is CSS? CSS stands for Cascading Style Sheets. CSS is a standard style sheet language used for describing the presentation of the web pages. Why we use CSS? CSS is used to define styles for your web pages, including the design, layout, and variations in display for different devices and screen sizes. Prior to CSS, nearly all of the presentational attributes of HTML documents were contained within the HTML markup, specifically inside the HTML tags. All the styles have to be explicitly described within the HTML. As a result, the development of large websites became a long and expensive process, since the style information was repeatedly added to every single page of the website. To solve this problem CSS was introduced in 1996 by the World Wide Web Consortium, W3C, which also maintains its standard. CSS was designed to enable the separation of presentation and content. Now web designers can move the formatting information of the web pages to a separate style sheet which results in considerably simpler HTML markup, and better maintainability. CSS3 is the latest version of the CSS specification. CSS3 adds several new styling features and improvements to enhance the web presentation capabilities. How to apply CSS? There are three ways of applying a style sheet, the following were inline style, internal style sheet, and external style sheet. Before we dive into the detail on how to apply the style sheet let's learn about its syntax. A CSS rule set consists of a selector and a declaration block. The selector points to the HTML elements you want to style. The declaration block contains one or more declarations separated by semicolons. Each declaration includes a CSS property name and a value, separated by a colon. A CSS declaration always ends with a semicolon, and declaration blocks are surrounded by curly braces. CSS Selectors CSS selectors are used to find or select HTML elements based on their element name, ID, class, attribute, and more. The types of selectors are element selector, ID selector, class selector, and grouping selectors. Element selector the element selector selects elements based on the element name. In this example you can select all paragraph elements. All paragraph elements will be center aligned, with a red text color. ID selector. The ID selector uses the ID attribute of an HTML element to select a specific element. The ID of an element should be unique within a page, so the ID selector is used to select one unique element. To select an element with a specific ID. Write a hash character, followed by the ID of the element. This is the style rule that will be applied to the HTML element with ID equals pair 1. Remember that an ID name cannot start with a number. Class Selector The class selector selects elements with a specific class attribute. To select elements with a specific class, write a period character, followed by the name of the class. In this example all HTML elements with class equal center will be read and center aligned. You can also specify that only specific HTML elements should be affected by a class. In this example, only paragraph elements with class equal center will be center aligned. HTML elements can also have more than one class. This is an example of paragraph with two classes. Remember a class name cannot start with a number. Grouping Selector If you have elements with the same style definitions, like this, it will be better to group the selectors, to minimize the code. To group selectors, separate each selector with a comma. Like this. CSS Comments Comments are used to explain the code, and may help when you edit the source code at a later date. Comments are ignored by browsers. A CSS comment starts with slash and ends with slash. Here's the example for a single line comment and here is for the multi-line comment. The inline style. 
An inline style may be used to apply a unique style for a single element. To use inline styles, add the style attribute to the relevant element. This style attribute can contain any CSS property. Here is an example that shows how to change the color and the left margin of an H1 element. An inline style loses many of the advantages of a style sheet, by mixing content with presentation. Use this method sparingly. Internal style sheet. An internal style sheet may be used if one single page has a unique style. Internal styles are defined within the style element, inside the head section of an HTML page. Check this example. External Style Sheet With an external style sheet, you can change the look of an entire website by changing just one file. Each page must include a reference to the external style sheet file inside the link element. The link element goes inside the head section. Let's see this example. Multiple style sheets. If some properties have been defined for the same selector, element, in different style sheets, the value from the last read style sheet will be used. Cascading order. What style will be used when there is more than one style specified for an HTML element? Generally speaking we can say that all the styles will cascade into a new virtual style sheet by the following rules, where number 1 has the highest priority, 1. Inline style inside an HTML element, 2. External and internal style sheets, in the head section, 3. Browser default. Good job! You completed the part 1 of unit 7. Part 2 of this unit will explain the CSS box model. Goodbye for now, and have a great day!